先生ちょっと質問がありますはいどうぞもったいないってどういう意味ですかそれは too good to waste という意味ですもったいないでどんな文章が作れるんですかうーん食事を残すなんてもったいないそのように使うんですねわかりましたありがとうございます Welcome to Learn Japanese Pod with me, Alex and Asuka. Asuka, お元気ですか元気 Alex はまあちょっと時差ボケがあるんだけどなんで最近イギリスに行ってきましたあらお里帰りそうそうそうすっごい楽しかったお母さんの家遊びに行きましたお母さん,んお元気ですか<笑>お母さんのおふくろの味とか食べてきたそうお母さんの料理食べてきて超太ってきたありがとうお母さん<笑> Anyway everyone welcome to learn Japanese pod how's it going I just got back from an awesome trip from the UK and I'm back in Japan it's absolutely boiling what's the temperature like there in LA I would have to check but it's been really nice it's cold at night and it's really cool in the morning as well and then when the sun comes the sun comes up it、yeah. gets pretty nice it's about the highs are 22 24 and then the lows are like 17 so it's perfect weather i love los angeles it was the same when i was in the uk in wales it was around 20 degrees during the day but really sunny and、mm-hmm. then i got to、uh, japan and it's Boiling hot. It's just、mm. way too much. Well,、uh, how, what, what's the word for、um, really, really hot summer? I forget. No, more s h o r e 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 I'll put that in the show notes. Yeah. Anyway, anyway today、um, we're looking at classroom Japanese. So if you're going to be studying Japanese in a classroom environment, Please listen to this dialogue because it will help you. Anyway, let's just launch into it. We'll explain it and then we'll give you some extra example sentences. Here we go. Sensei, just a question. Yes, please. 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 食事を残すなんてもったいないそのように使うんですねわかりましたありがとうございます So everyone, did you understand that? That's a super useful dialogue asking questions to your teacher when you don't understand the vocabulary So let's break that down The first thing I said was 先生ちょっと質問があります Teacher, I have a question This is kind of a weird thing because in English we never say teacher, do we? But in Japanese, you say sensei. So. And、uh, Japanese people love sensei. They, they love、mm. going to somebody with authority, somebody that has more knowledge. So they、mm. call, obviously, teachers、mm. sensei, somebody who knows some kind of knowledge.、Mm. They call、um, mm. lawyers sensei. They also、yeah. call, obviously, you know, doctors sensei. So.、Yeah. Ah,、uh, Now, that, that wasn't obvious to me when I went to、uh, Japan for the first time and had my first、huh. health checkup. I was, I was saying, Sensei, Sensei, why are they calling him teacher? But、uh, basically, Sensei, I would, what you're saying, Asuka, is Sensei is someone with knowledge. I don't know if this is true, but when you look at the word Sensei or the character, Saki ni umareru, somebody who has been born before. So, somebody、uh... who has prior knowledge of something that you don't have is called Sensei. Saki ni umareru. You just explode. I've been in Japan for 21 years and I never. I don't know. We'll have to look it up because it's so commonly used. And as、yeah. Japanese people, we don't even think about it. It's a word、mm. very commonly used.、Mm. It's thrown around a lot.、Mm. You know, you can be a dance teacher. They would call me sensei. But you can also be, like I said,、mm. a bengoshi, a lawyer, and they will call you sensei.、Mm. There's so many、mm. ways of calling. Like you can be, I don't know, some, yeah, lawyers. Uh, some kind of like very authoritative、uh, person that would call you sensei. So,、right. 
Yeah, so you, it's a very commonly used word. It'll be really interesting to check and see if yeah. it is indeed, like, where does the word sensei come from? Come check from, out because... check out the etymology of that word. Absolutely. And also it kind of, because as we're on the subject, it, I think Japanese people are very curious. They have a kōkishin. They have mm-hmm. a very, you know, they're very... Curiosity, yeah. They love learning. They love reading. They love education. And they also show a lot of respect to yep. people who have specialist knowledge. Yes. And I, I really love that about the Japanese, the way that they really do respect intelligence they respect mm-hmm. learning um it's not it's not a culture where they try to dumb down things so that, right. that's an awesome thing okay and, so yeah and just one more thing when you are on a, at a position where you are the sensei mm. uh you really have to sort of honor that position and right. the influence that you have over the people because yes 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 so when i was a yeah. dance teacher i mm. was very mindful and aware of what i'm transmitting it wasn't just a dance it's who I am, how I carry myself, what information am I portraying? Because Mm. they tend to get quite attached to you and they start sort of like idolizing you and sort of putting you on a pedestal. So you you have the responsibility to really portray yourself in a good light to benefit your students or the people that you're interacting. So it's a very powerful position. It is also a lot of responsibility. And whoever is in that position of a sensei, I hope they are quite aware of that and they use it to the maximum benefit that's an excellent point and here's one extra uh point if you go to japan and maybe you teach english or whatever Mm -hmm. people refer to you as sensei Sensei. so they would refer to you as uh, asuka sensei or naito sensei but never refer to yourself as sensei Mm -hmm. if you're if you if you say you're a teacher so for example if you're teaching english in japan you would never say Watashi wa ego no sensei. You would say, Watashi wa ego no kyoshi desu. Yeah, so kyoshi just means an instructor. Mm-hmm. Sensei has that connotation of respect. Yeah. Of respect and status. And so in Japan, it wouldn't be the done thing to say that yeah. about yourself. Yeah. You can't yeah. really sort of, you know, toot your own horn. <laughs> you yeah, have to sort yeah. of like dumb yourself down and be very uh, humble. So yeah, yeah. using that word for yourself, you're absolutely right, is inappropriate. Mm. Oh, okay, good. So let's get on with the rest of the dialogue. Wow, we do, we just talked about just the word sensei for 10 minutes. <laughs> but that was super interesting, though. That was really interesting. It's really so, important. So anyway, the dialogue, uh, sensei, chotto shitsumon ga arimasu. Uh, so teacher, I have a question. Okay, before we get into the next sentence, I just want to touch on the fact of why do we say chotto shitsumon ga arimasu? I have a, I have a little question. Yeah. A, a bit of a question. Why don't you just go, Sensei, shitsumon ga You could, but that means you're very assertive. And most yeah. people are not. So most likely they're going to go, Sensei, chotto shitsumon ga I have a little bit of a question that I would like to bother you about. So it has that kind of tone. I always thought that chotto is a bit like just in English. Could I just ask a question? Yeah. It's very, it's very tentative language, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not very direct. No. And of course, as you should know, the Japanese tend not to be direct communicators. Right. They tend to be more tentative. Yep. Talk around the houses, yeah. Very much. A- and and once you get to learn the ins and out and when to use it, it becomes very useful. Yo, oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, sensei, chotto shitsumon ga arimasu. Sensei goes, hai, douzo. Yes, please. Go go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And then the word, and now this is, is a phrase I want you all to memorize. Mottai nai te. どういう意味ですか? So the, what you do is you take the word you don't understand mm-hmm. and then after it you say てどういう意味ですか? So もったいない is a word てどういう意味ですか? What does もったいない mean? Mm-hmm. What does もったいない mean? And then you said それは too good to waste という意味です And that just means too good so it means too good to waste. So just remember that uh, that that's really today's key phrase. So nani nani something whatever the word you don't understand te doyu imi desu ka? And then the answer is sorry wa word you don't understand toyu imi desu. So what does so and so mean? It means this. And then I said mottai nai de donna bunsho ga tsukureru desu ka? So that's just saying... What kind of sentence can I make with using mottainai? So whatever the word... Could you, could you give me an example? 
Yeah, so give me an example sentence. And then the example sentence was. Shokuji, food, no kosu, to leave, motainai, waste. So it's a waste to leave food on your plate.、Mm-hmm. Now that's another thing we can get into very deeply, Japanese culture, but we'll come back to that in a moment. And then finally, I said, sono yo ni tsukaun desu ne. And so, what does that mean, Asuka? Is that like, oh, that's how you use it then? Yep. Wakarimashita. I understand. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. That's it. Now, that sentence or that dialogue is something I wish I had learned before I went to my one year Japanese intensive course at ICU University. Oh my God, 20 years ago now. So, when I first came <laughs> to Japan, if I had known that dialogue, It would have made such a big difference, like for the first month. I eventually worked out how to ask that question, but、mm-hmm. I remember sitting in my first lesson and I just didn't know what the hell was going on.、Mm-hmm. And if I had just, you know, but, Sumimasen, sensei, just a shitsumon ga arimasu. If I'd known that, it would have really, really helped. So if you yourself are going to study Japanese in a classroom environment, use that. It's awesome. So, hey, Asuka, could you say the whole thing so、uh, our lovely listeners can hear a native Japanese person? Absolutely. Yoroshiku, o n i g a i s h i m a s u Hai. Sensei, chotto shitsumon ga arimasu. Hai, douzo. Mottai nai te dou yu imi desu ka? Sore wa too good to waste to yu imi desu. Mottai nai de dou na bunshou ga tsukureru n desu ka? 食事を残すなんてもったいない。そのように使うんですね。わかりました。ありがとうございます。You know, the thing I love about your Japanese, Asuka, is I can hear you smiling when you, <laughs> when you speak the Japanese. It sounds so nice. It's so beautiful. It's almost as if you're a professionally trained radio announcer. Oh, almost. <laughs> no, it is. It is. Well, she. Asuka is a professionally trained radio announcer. That's why it sounds so beautiful. That's really fantastic. So,、um, just a quick note on Sokuji o nokosu nante, mottai nai. This is a deep one. So, don't waste your food in Japanese culture. It is really, really, really uncool to leave food on your plate because it dates back to the days when people put a hell of a lot of work into farming、mm-hmm. rice.、Mm-hmm. So even if you left one grain of rice in your bowl,、yep. it was like saying, I don't care about the effort that you've put in to harvest this rice.、Yep. So even today, that culture has continued. And so Japanese are very, very aware of wasting food or wasting resources. So that's a really interesting, it's a nice aspect of Japanese culture. Very interesting. That's so interesting that you mentioned that because、mm. growing up, As a Japanese, but growing up abroad, my、mm. mom would always say, You can't have any rice bits on your bowl. Like the bowl、yeah. needs to be clean. And when you see people who are non Japanese eat rice, like it, there's like rice everywhere because it gets、yeah. very sticky and it's really difficult to pick each little grain of rice. But the whole story that you're told as a child, being a Japanese person, is that they. You know, the farmers work so hard to harvest、mm. this rice, and you're disrespecting that effort、mm. that they put in.、Mm. Eat all the pieces of rice that you can see because there should be nothing on the bowl. Right, right. And it's even more sort of, you know, pushed upon the rice than the other dishes itself. I don't know what it is, but it, it, it's also probably very visual. You know, yeah, sometimes、right. some things can kind of, there's like sauce and like little stuff that you can't really pick up, but. Rice is so easy to pick up with chopsticks. And that's also another thing. Like, they really are very,、um, how would you word it?、Um, they want you to hold the chopstick the right way. Like, that's,、yeah. a, that's like having good table manners, like the way you use your knife and fork in Europe and, you know, Western culture. But it's, it's also like you're supposed to be able to pick every single piece s if you are good with your chopsticks, kind of thing as well. And I think in Japan, the, the thing I kind of like about Japan is. There is a proper way of doing things. Yes, there's you know, always you're, you're, a way. The, 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 it, it, in the West, maybe there's more, well, you know, everyone's different and there's a bit more relativism. But in Japan, there is a proper way. You eat rice like this,、yes. you bow like this, you、there、work like this. There is the way. Yeah. There is the way.、Mm-hmm. And in a way, it makes life really simple.、Mm-hmm. Because, it, I mean, you know, obviously, in, you know, 
for people who don't fit into society is really tough. Right. But if you follow the rules. And you can like claim perfectionism. So it's all sort of like build up of perfectionism. But right, right, it's, right. it's so interesting because that works for everything. Like judo, the way uh, of the yeah. of the yawarakai, like flexibility. You know, yeah. shodo, the way of how to you write. Sado, the way of the T. So do, which is michi, which is the way, sort of like the path. Um, it's ingrained in our cult culture quite quite deeply. And one more thing about rice. I, I had this <laughs> really, really interesting uh, cross-cultural miscommunication uh, with uh, Japanese friends of mine. So, you know, you know the question... What would you eat for your last meal? You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're gonna be you're gonna be executed tomorrow. Right. You've got one last meal. What would you eat? A lot. Some of the not all of them, but some of the Japanese people I asked that question. You know, obviously I'm I'm thinking, oh well, I'd have roast Sushi. turkey with. Oh. Well, no, no. <laughs> I mean, like I would I would say like I'm gonna have roast turkey with all the trimmings and gravy and a massive hamburger and a chocolate sundae right and then a couple of my japanese friends were just like rice i'm like, <laughs> I'm like what yeah just rice and I, it, it didn't make any sense to me and then i realized that they were interpreting the question in a completely different way mm -hmm. the real meaning of the question is what's the most delicious food you can think of right right that you would like to eat, eat like before you even disappear from this world exactly but Basically, it's just think of the most amazing food. Mm -hmm. I think for, for them, it's like you're going to die. So they must purify themselves. <laughs> and then rice, rice has this very uh, spiritual element to it, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, this, it's almost this like holy kind of food. It's not like a chocolate bar. No. It's not like ramen. Rice is obviously, you know, this was the staple of Japan for thousands of years. So it's got this kind of holy, kind of pure aspect. So before you die, you drink this sake and then the bowl of rice and then that's it. Hey, do you want to do the dialogue one more time just for fun? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. Sensei, just a question がありますはい、どうぞ。もったいないってどういう意味ですかそれは too good to waste という意味です。もったいないでどんな文章が作れるんですか食事を残すなんてもったいないそのように使うんですねわかりましたありがとうございます Awesome Fantastic And now it's time for Random phrase of the week もったいないもったいない So I thought what we do is uh, uh, This week's random phrase of the week is Of course もったいない The word we were just learning just now So Asuka could you come up with An amazing sentence. Oh, actually, I should say, Very good, Alex. Alex, That's a good one. Say that again. Alex, Yeah, that's a good one. So, Nante, Motainai, Kanojo, girlfriend, Futta, Futta is to what, break dump, up. break yeah. up with, break up, dump. I, I like, I like dump better because it, dump, yeah, yeah, basically you kind of broke up, but probably who knows what the story is, but maybe even dump. What, what's the literal meaning of Furu or Futta? It's like to wave, to shake. Normally, but you're probably, I don't know, that's a good question. We'll have to look yeah. it up. Yeah, I don't really have much information on that. We'll uh, check that and mm -hmm. uh, it, may, it might have an interesting etymology. Anyway, kanajo of that. So you dumped, dumped your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Nante kind of means like, what on earth? Like, you know, it's just uh, emphasizing, emphasizing surprise. Emphasizing the fact that you dumped your girlfriend. Yeah. So like, nante is kind of like, it's a bit like, what on earth? You know, what mm -hmm. on earth? Uh, in this in this case in this case it would be like I can't believe it you dumped your girlfriend Motainai what a waste. a waste so she was beautiful intelligent she had a sweet. degree sweet she had a degree in astrophysics you know how could you dump her Asuka Sensei はいもう一つ文章例文作っていただけますかはいもう新しいパソコン買うの
もったいないな、まだ使えるのに。うーん、That's a good one. Do that again? もう新しいパソコン買うのもったいないな、まだ使えるのに。もう新しいパソコン買うの。So, oh, you're going to buy a new PC? もったいないな。What, what a waste. まだ使えるのに。Still be able to use even though. So, you're buying a new, you're buying a new PC? What a waste. Because you can still use the one you have already.、Mm-hmm. But, and, yeah. And in, in this sentence, what's really interesting is that you're not referring the old computer. You're talking about,、mm-hmm. uh, you're,、mm-hmm. you're going to buy a new computer already? What a waste. Yeah, so the, yeah, yeah. The, the nuance is, まだ使えるのに is referring to, 今のパソコンはまだ使えるのに but you've abbreviated this because within the two people that are having conversation,、mm-hmm. you're already knowing that information when they say, まだ使えるもったいないな right, right. So, once somebody says もったいないな on a new purchase, so this can be anything. もう新しい靴買うのもったいないなまだ使えるのに。Yeah? So, it's, it's quite useful. It's basically you're criticizing somebody's new purchase because you think they're buying something that they can still use. Yeah, welcome to, welcome to the vagueness of Japanese.、Uh, that's, pretty, that's a really tough thing. And the beauty. Which、mm, yeah, sits yeah. between those lines of vagueness. <laughs> I think, you know, one, one thing, I, another thing I wish I had learned when I was starting out in Japanese is the minimalism of Japanese.、Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, understanding it as a foreigner, not being used to it, is really tough. That vagueness is like, obviously,、right. there's, sometimes there's no subject. You don't know what the hell, who did what and when is like really hard. But on the other hand, you want to look at the simplicity, the beauty. The Zen、mm-hmm. nature of it or the haiku nature of it. It's,、uh, it's, um, it, it's a con. Less is more. You have,、right. to, you have to really boil down what you want to say into the shortest way possible. And for a loud mouth like me, that's pretty hard.、So. <laughs> Go on,、um, Asuka Sensei, もう一つの文章を言っていただけますか Alex. 君にその指輪はもったいないよ。<笑>もう一回、どうぞ。アレックス、君にその指輪はもったいないよ。So, does that mean you're wearing that ring is wasted? That is, wearing a ring is wasted on you, right? Basically, I'm telling you two things. One,、yeah. yes. One, I'm telling you the ring does not good look on you. Yeah. And two, you don't deserve that ring. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Nice, nice, nice. So, Kimi ni sono yubi wa wa mottai nai yo. So, you don't deserve that ring. That、mm-hmm. ring is wasted on you. Yes. Oh, oh. Out. Out. Oh, you didn't. Oh, you <laughs> did. Yes, I did. <laughs> So beautiful learn Japanese pod listeners, thank you very much for listening today. Asuka sensei, いろいろ教えていただいてありがとうございました。ししたすごい勉強になりましたあの。言語のことだけじゃなくて、文化のことにも大変勉強になってありがとうございます。So,、um, everyone, please send us an email if you have a question at info at learnjapanesepod.com. You can find us on Twitter at Japanese Podcast. And you can check out our Facebook page. Just search for our page,、uh, Learn Japanese Pod. Check out our website at learnjapanesepod.com. And see you next time. Mata yoroshiku. Onigai shimasu. Onigai shimasu.